Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. I hope you're all well and staying safe in these tough times. Now in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build a simple and small little generator microcontroller. This will be used to control any type of generator that you want to here in Stormworks. It'll be just a microprocessor, nice and small and compact and very basic. Go over all the components you'll need. I'll show you a little test example and then we'll actually build the microprocessor up and use it on our test bench. Now, if you're enjoying this video, just comment below and else you'd like to see any of my future videos, why there? Don't forget that like and subscribe button and take a little bell icon to be notified of my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So all said, let's get straight into it and get started with this video. So getting started, we're back here at the Creative Island inside the hangar on a very miserable and wet day. Uh, and you can see in front of us, we have a little test bed. Now, simply on the right hand side, I have got a small electric motor connected to a propeller. We can read the battery and we have a throttle. So what we're having here is pretty much just a vehicle that we're gonna be using a battery to drive it. Very example, very easy. Uh, and on the left hand side, we have a very compact engine here. So you can see a very default, just small little engine. Along with it is just all the connections we need, a little bit of diesel, a little bit of fuel, and we have a medium sized generator. Now, of course, you could use any size engine you want and any size electric generator. You can obviously scale this up or scale it down as you want to. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a little microprocessor to go and control this engine automatically for us. What we want is when this battery drops below a certain point, we want the generator to kick in and recharge the battery. Once it's recharged, we want that to switch off and we want to continue using our propeller and continuing recharging as soon as it drops below a certain value. Now this is really easy to create. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this to the workbench. We're going to go straight in and we're going to go and create a microcontroller. We're going to click on here and we're going to start off with a brand new microcontroller. We're going to call this a generator controller. Very simple, very easy. We're then going to leave it at four, two by two. So you can see it's two across and two height. We're going to add some logic nodes onto it. The first thing we want to do is we want to go and actually turn the engine on and off. To do that, we just need a on off and we're going to set it to output. That's going to be the turn on. Fantastic. The next thing we're going to need is a way of controlling the throttle to that engine. So we're going to go throttle and it's going to be out. We're going to change it to an output over here. So, so far we can see that we can turn the engine on and we can control the throttle. We also want to be reading the battery of the engine or battery of the whatever vehicle we're using. Okay, because that way we can read if we need the generator to be on and off. And then lastly, we also want to be reading the RPS of the engine itself. That way we can tell whether we need to give it more throttle or less throttle. Once we're happy with all of this, we can just go into our logic and now we can start building the logic up. I'm gonna start separating it all out here into different areas. The first thing we want to do is we want to control the throttle. So we want the system to either give more or less throttle depending on what the RPS is. So we have the RPS here and we have the throttle out. We're going to be using a simple PID. Now you can either use the advanced or you can use the regular one. This is up to you. Uh, for this example, I'm going to be using the simple PID controller. We're going to be taking that PID and we're going to be sending it into the throttle out. Our set point for the PID can be anything you want it to be. We're going to go and put a constant number down and we're going to connect that to our set point. For example, we're going to tell the system we always want it to run at 10 RPS. We could tell it to run at 15 RPS, we could run it at 8 RPS, it's up to you. Whatever value you think is producing the most amount of wattage, you can go and select here. You can obviously tweak this as much as you want to. I'm going to set a 10 RPS because that's what I think is going to be enough. The next thing is what is a process variable. The process variable is the RPS. Okay, so we're going to connect that up. So this takes care of our throttle for the engine. The next thing is we obviously want to turn that microprocessor or the PID on. And we also want to turn the engine on. What we're going to do is here is we're going to be reading the battery. So for example, we're going to take a threshold gate here. I'm going to put two of them down. First threshold gate is going to be saying, okay, if the battery is between zero and let's say 0 0.9, we're going to turn the vehicle on. Okay. 
But however, if it gets to fully charged, which is 1.1, you want to turn this off. And the easiest way to do that is to use an SR latch. Using an SR latch here, we can go specifically tell the system when you're between 0 0.9, between 0, so between 0 and 0 0.9, we want to turn you on. But as soon as you get the 1, which is fully charged, we're going to reset you. Great, now that's turning on. The only problem is we don't need that starter always on. We only want it on when the RPS is between 0 and probably 4 RPS. So we're going to go and add another threshold gate. And this time what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reading the RPS of the engine. And we're going to say if the RPS of the engine is between 0 and 4, we want to also turn the engine on. To do that we're going to add a hand block. So the system is now, before it's turning the engine on, it's going to check to see if the battery is below. And it's also going to check if the RPS is below 4. If it hits both of those points, then it's only going to turn the starter engine on. We're thinking, well, we also need to connect the PID here. We only want the PID to be active if the battery is below the certain point. So all we have to do is go and take this SR latch here, and we can turn the PID on. As soon as it hits 1, which is fully charged, it's going to disconnect, kind of stop this, reset it, and it's going to turn that PID off, which means the RPS should go and drop. The last thing we want to do is we want to go and add in the PID settings. So you can see here, I'm going to click on the PID. I'm just going to put in some very default settings. We're going to be using 0, 0.0, let's go 0 0.8, and we'll do integral gain, we'll do 0 0.005. These settings are quite useful. I've used them on quite a few of my creations already, so we're just going to keep on using those. They work for pretty much any size engine, so you can use them. Once we've got that in, we can obviously go and save this mic controller. To save it, I just like to simply just go and take this name here, and then I can go and save it. I've actually already got it saved, so I'm just going to go and override it. Once we've got it saved, we can close out of the mic controller editor, and we can simply go and add that in. You can see here, I've already got it searched, and I'm going to select it, and I'm going to add it on to our creation just over here. Once we've got it added on, we can go and connect all the logic up. You can see here we're going to simply take the throttle out, we're going to connect it to our engine, we're going to turn, take our turn on and connect that to the engine, battery is going to be connected to our battery, and RPS is going to connect to the engine RPS. You can see I've already got two dials over here. Those two dials are showing us the engine RPS and also the generator wattage. Make sure if you haven't connected anything else up, connect up all the electricity. You can see that I didn't connect the wattage up. And we can go and spawn this in. Now you can see straight away the engine is off. We're not producing any power. We have a full battery. Let's go and start using that battery. So you'll notice that now our battery is going to start going down. And ideally, because we set that to 0 0.9 to turn on, as soon as our battery gets to 0 0.9, that generator should go and turn on for us and it will recharge the battery until the battery gets to one. So let's give it a couple seconds here and should be hitting 0 0.9 and there we go. The engine is now running. It's now producing power. Our battery is recharging. Let's go and actually kill the throttle here. You can see our battery is recharging much quicker because obviously it's generating quite a lot of power. And as soon as that gets to 1, that engine should die. There we go. Engine has now switched off. And is nice and happy. You can see here what's have gone down. And also our RPS has gone down. That's because the PID is turned off. You can see our battery is completely filled. And we can com com continue repeating that process as much as we want to. This will turn on as soon as that drops down below 0.9. Of course, you could make that 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.2. It's up to you on the settings. If you want to add some more extra features, what you could also do is a temperature sensor. So what we're going to do is we're going to extend the size of this microprocessor simply by just putting a little length. And we're going to go and read the engine temp. And let's go and take our number input engine temp. We're going to go back over to the logic and you can see here we have the engine temp now what we're going to do is we're going to tell the system if the temperature is above let's say above 140 we want you to kill everything turn everything off so what you can do is you can just turn off the microprocessor and simply to do that all we have to do is take a NAND 
So you can see here, NAND. So this is saying that if this, okay, which is going to be using a threshold gate, if this is between, let's say, 140 and 200, then we're going to go and not have it on. Okay, and add the SR light to there, connect it over there. And this is only, this NAND only works if one of those two things are active. Okay, so if this is active, which it should be on, okay, and this also get active, it's gonna switch off our PID. Pretty useful. Instead, if you didn't wanna use this system, you could get rid of this NAND. You could use the AND, and we could tell the system if the engine temperature is between zero and 139, we want you to turn on and we need the SR latch and then you're turning on. If this then drops, goes higher than 139, this will not get it, which means the pit is going to turn itself off. If you want to add another level of complexity to this microtroller, you can go and actually export all that data by a composite. So we can go and use a composite out and that can go to anything that can go to a screen that could go to another microprocessor go to another vehicle could go send by radio it's up to you we're going to go and take that controller over there and we're going to convert all this data into it simply to do that we're going to go and get our composite write numbers and composite write on off go and add those on and we can give some channels let's give this one five channels and this one five channels so you can see now what we're going to do is we're going to say okay the engine rps can go on channel one uh the engine temperature can go on channel two maybe the battery can go on channel three the, uh, the throttle of the generator can go out on four uh you could say for example let's say if the whole system is on or not we can send out on one we could say maybe if the engine's overheated we could send that out too it's up to you you can add as many things as you want but straight away you can see we've already got five information stats coming out of this going out by composite so you can build on this and add more and more features as you want to this is completely up to you as i said you can scale this engine up and the generator up as much as you want to but as long as you have the microprocessor you can add as many of these as you need for as many engines as you want in your creation so i think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and found it entertaining and informative as always and we'll see you in the next one.